So this is my explanation of subsidies. And so subsidies is, are a series of tools government use to encourage the consumption or production of goods. So up on the whiteboard there's three uh, kind of different examples of subsidies. Firstly, products which have positive benefits to society, such as vaccinations for young children, they tend to be subsidised by government to encourage greater consumption of those products. So pretty much government will pay producers to produce them at a cheaper price and that's passed on to consumers, therefore thereby increasing the quantity demand for products. Another example could be to do with farmers. If we want to increase the revenues of farmers, maybe protect some jobs in the agricultural sector, we can give them a subsidy for the quantity that they produce, and so that's also passed on to the market. And finally, there's certain public goods that we, as societies, that are rather, rather desirable, thinking about education, public transport, and also good health care, and so those types of products are also subsidised. Uh, government pays a financial cost to those types of firms to encourage the consumption of products. So, I'm going to go through and explain diagrammatically what subsidies do to the market, talk about the effect on consumers and producers, and the cost that governments face. And then we'll do a quick evaluation and talk about some of the benefits and this concept called efficiency. And so what subsidies do is it changes the price signal in the market. And it does that in one special way. It does that by offering additional resources to firms. So, they can, so it encourages them to produce things at a cheaper price. Signaling to consumers that these products are perhaps we consider them to be more desirable. There's a quick explanation. We have our original supply curve here. So the aim in the circumstance is to, we talk about this as being the original uh, equilibrium quantity and the original equilibrium price. We want to do two things. We want to lower this price and simultaneously increase the quantity of these products that's demanded. So the easiest way to do this for governments is to suggest to firms to reduce the supply. And so what this does, what this does, it leads to the, a vertical shift down in the supply curve, leading to changes in the quantity down the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're aiming towards a new quantity down the bottom, and obviously, at a lower price. But to achieve this, firms need to be offered a certain degree of motivation to, 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 to increase their supply. Because what we're trying to do is, if we want to get to this point, we need to offer we need to offer like a considerable subsidy per unit to the producer to encourage them to do this. So if we're talking about if this was the market for market for public housing, and these are the producers of the houses in the economy, then to achieve the subsidy, and to shift the supply curve down this way, they need an, incre an incredible subsidy, which is shown as, in my line straight, the vertical distance between here and here. And by offering them this subsidy from here to here, we shift the quantity down this curve here, leading to more consumers more consumers considering the products down the bottom here. So we'll talk about this. So the impacts of the subsidy, as we're shown here, this the impact on different stakeholders. So our stakeholders in this case are similar to before. There are consumers. Our producers, the government also is an important stakeholder here. And we can also talk about workers as an example down the bottom here. So as we can see the consumers, as it's been desirable, these types of products, which are sometimes called merit goods and public goods, have had a fall in price. At the same time, we've had a an increase in the quantity demanded, which is positive for, for um, households. And this is increasing their welfare. 
Producers is interesting. So producers have been offered, they are offered a higher price than the market currently exists, that currently exists in the market to encourage them to produce more. So for them, the price goes up and at the same time, the quantity supplied also increases. And to achieve this, the government has to offer a special type of this thing called a subsidy. We illustrate it here. So the subsidy here is the distance between here and here. Which, say on a house, might be the subsidy might be, say, $10,000. Could be $10,000, $50,000 on a house. But the government has to pay. subsidy times the quantity of houses that the subsidy applies to, if that makes sense. So the subsidy is calculated by this amount here times all the way up to Q1. So it's the subsidy times the quantity sold in the market. So this is a considerable, a considerable cost to, to government. And we can show it with another, with another colour. It's been this rather large green rectangle. And we can talk further. There's opportunity costs for this. If the government wants to subsidise the pricing of health, the cost of housing in the market, the money has to come from somewhere else. Taxes could go up, we talked about in the previous episode. But in generally there's a reduction in spending somewhere else to pay for this. That's a good example of some of the opportunity costs. For workers, due to the increase in the quantity that's being sold, there is increased employment for them, which is positive. I don't have opportunities to work, and over time we expect that some of their incomes, some of their incomes will also increase. Okay. So that's kind of the end of this little episode about subsidies.